We are about to welcome uh, a very special individual to pass to Wire TV, who I am, uh, you know, honored and privileged to have. I think all of you will enjoy meeting him. Uh, if you hear the background noise, uh, I apologize. That is my new roof being installed uh, as a result of Hurricane Ian, and uh, my insurance company, who is not at this point paying for it ought to thank uh, for this noise happening now, several months going on a year after the storm as we approach hurricane season once again. So if the noise annoys you, uh, you can ask me for their address and I'd be more than happy to share it and have you send them a letter uh, telling them that they should pay the hurricane claims that they insure. Um, but that aside, uh, very, very special individual coming on. I think you will all, all enjoy uh, the inspiration and, and the enthusiasm and dedication that we're about to see. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy the show. Thank you for visiting Pass the Wire TV, the YouTube channel of PassTheWire.com. Tracking trips with Pick 6 King, John Stetton. It's one of the best tools in horse racing for any level of player. It's your second set of eyes. Spotting troubled trips, betting angles, track trends. Horses to watch and favorites to fade. 10 figs, ticket structure, and more. At Tracking Trips, you're a friend with benefits. Not a member? You must hate winning money. Join Tracking Trips now. Visit PassTheWire.com and we'll see you in the winner circle. Remember, nobody does it better. It is here, the big day, the day almost all of us in horse racing wait for, Breeders' Cup Saturday. It looks like we're gonna see some really, really impressive races on Saturday. It starts with the Philly and Mayor Sprint. Uh, one of my stronger opinions on the card is, is Goodnight Olive to start things off. I think she gets a perfect trip. Goodnight Olive, six in a row, and a Breeders' Cup champion. We've got Modern Games going in the turf mile for Godolphin. Uh, the Godolphin and Aiden O'Brien horses, we said on Pass the Wire TV all week long on the backside, those two contingents stuck out from all the rest. Modern Games looking for a, a, a big race in front of him. Modern Games storming down the center of the course. Modern Games, a two-time Raiders Cup winner. You bet he is. That is Rebels Romance, who in my humble opinion is one of the Dolphins uh, better chances this year. Rebels Romance is a very, very good looking Godolphin horse that can absolutely win this race. Rebels Romance is a must use. Rebels Romance, rolling on the outside, Marla Goddess makes her bid down toward the inside. Rebels Romance down the center of the course, has a close to home. Rebels Romance wins the turf over Stone Age. We got Flightline that they're putting in the best ever category. There's no question that the race he ran in the Pacific Classic is one of the best races we've seen any racehorse run ever. It is Flightline, it is mind tingling, jaw dropping, awe inspiring, Secretariat Mike, Raiders Cup Classic win. He won it by eight legs on the wire. Uh, like I said, uh, leading into this, a very, very special guest that I feel privileged to have. Um, George Allen Bryant is on with us. He is, he is a horse trainer, and, and we will get to that. Uh, 
But before we do, George, first, first off, thank you so much for coming on the show. Pri a pri absolute privilege to have you, man. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. I've been a big fan of yours for a while now. Well, I, 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 I appreciate that, but I've been a big fan of yours. And, 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 and I want to stop by this. You know, people talk about, and, and it comes into our game as well, the toughest athletes, and they'll throw jockeys around, and jockeys are very tough. For um, sure. They'll throw around NFL players. NFL players are very tough, okay? For sure. Um, at the Breeders' Cup last year, I was lucky enough to be sitting at the table next to Tough Hedeman. I don't know if you know who Tough Hedeman is. Of course. You're a Texan, so I'm assuming, Cowboy, yeah. I'm assuming that you do. Um, right. and I did, and I met Tough Hedeman, and Tough Hedeman knew who I was. When I went over to meet him, he cool. goes, you're, you're that John Stenton guy from past the wire. I'm like, you know who I am? I says, I'm coming over to shake your hand and you know who I am? We took a picture together and to me, in my That's opinion, amazing. there is nobody in sports, I don't care what sport you name, that's tougher than bull riders. No, okay. yeah, there's no um, chance I would do that. Right. Eight seconds? I I couldn't, an eighth of a second is, 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 is a long time. Um, yeah. They're tough. MMA, K fight, cage fighters, those guys are tough. But you've gone through something in your life um, that, that really puts that in perspective. Okay. And, 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 and requires a whole different <clears throat> level of toughness, um, that you really have no choice when you're in that situation. You have to find that toughness or basically you don't survive. Yeah. And, um, I, and I've, done it, I've done it twice, you I've know, it twice. So, uh, you, you are a cancer survivor. Yep. Um, let's talk a little bit about that, a little bit about what that took and, and, and what it was like to first at, 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 at such a young age hear that, that, that devastating word that nobody wants to hear. Man, it was wild because I just, I was in a relationship with, with my, she's now my ex, but we're still very cordial. We just found out we were pregnant. Uh huh. We, she was two months pregnant, and I, uh, I had a sore on my tongue for like two years, and I thought it was because I drank sodas and Red Bulls and coffee. I was like, man, it's like an ulcer that wouldn't heal. And then one day we were all at dinner with her friends, and they're like, um, one of her friends is like, hey, we'll just come by my doctor. And I have this checked out. I'm like, okay. She's like, because it's not normal. I was like, all right. I went. They cut a little piece of it out. And a couple of days later, she called me back and said, yeah, you have cancer. It's cancer in your tongue. I was like, damn. I was like, what do they got to do? Probably just cut it out. But you need to go to the hospital and have it checked out. So I went to the hospital. They did a CT scan. And I had it for so long. And it already went to my lymph nodes in my leg, my neck. So it started on the right side of my tongue and it had moved to the left side of my neck. So they categorized it as stage four. Stage four A is what they said, because it's moved from organ to organ. And uh, the doctor's like, yeah, well, congratulations on y'all being pregnant. But if you want, Well, we lost George there. I'm sure he'll be right back. Okay, George, we lost you for a second there. Continue. Yeah. So, well, I didn't know I was having a boy yet, but I had a boy. And uh, as if you want to see your, boy, your, your child born, then you need to have some surgery. I was like, man, I ain't scared of surgery. Let's do it. So uh, they went. It was uh, November 11th of 2001. And they went in. I went to the hospital that morning at 5.30 a.m. Six o'clock was my surgery. They cut out half of my tongue. 
they would see different colors. And then they cut me from ear to ear, opened me up, and took out like 70 or 80 lymph nodes out of my neck. And then after that, I healed up a little bit and they, uh, I went through um, radiation. I did 30 treatments of radiation in December and January. And at the end of January, I was, uh, I lost about 85 pounds. I was about 230, lost about 85 pounds. It had, it had just completely wrecked me. And while I was, I couldn't do nothing. The only thing I could focus on was TV and, and horse racing. That's all I had to do. And I've always been an owner. My dad was a tra jockey turned trainer. So I've always been in the game. And he had recently retired. And so the whole time I was just laying there in bed watching races, like, man, I've always wanted to be a trainer. And if I were to die right now, I would have never done that. So I said, screw it, man. As soon as I get healthy, I'm going to train. I don't care. I'll, I hit up everybody I know. Send me a horse. Send me a horse. I just want to train. So I finally got healthy in February. It took me about two months to recover from the radiation. And then April of 22, 2022, a guy named Adam Blick in Tennessee. I had a podcast. Never met the guy. He just texted me again. Hey, buddy, I know you've been through some stuff. I'm lucky enough to have a pretty good business. I love what you do. Uh, I love your podcast. I'm going to send you uh, 40000 cash. Will you claim me some horses? I said, hell yeah. And then he's been my main guy. Now I think he has 11. And uh, he's winning at 30%. He's made like over 200,000 in earnings. The guy without him, it wouldn't be nothing. But you're winning, you're winning at an unbelievable percentage. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, you're winning I'm, all over the place. You're winning at all these, these little tracks all over the place. Yeah, listen, yeah. I've been in the game for half a century, maybe more. And you're winning at tracks. I thought I knew every racetrack there was. You're winning at tracks I never heard of. We're tracks yeah. are closing down. This guy's winning at tracks I yeah. never heard of, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. Um, I'll be sitting there if I don't see anything in the condition book for my horses. I'm like, where hey Google, what race track is within like six hours of me right now? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I run at Gillespie County Fairgrounds and uh I know I was like, man, I got some hammers, I can just drop some hammers on them, you know. Right. So I did that this last weekend. I took two down there, and they're both like three to five. One win easy, and the other one just got be like this in the little stakes race. But yeah, you but, you um, started sixty three horses in two thousand and twenty three. You win thirteen races, six seconds, yeah. six thirds. Um, halfway through the year, running at these smaller track, your yeah. horses burned over two hundred thousand. Um, yeah. That 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 that's a pretty nice record, man. That's yeah. that. I mean, you, <laughs> to, you you you've done go to it. My starts, yeah. Go to uh -huh. my starts. I think in my last twenty races, I think I've won nine. Yeah, I've been no, on it's, absolute it's, fire. It's 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 ridiculous. Um, yeah. you know, I, I I guess it goes to 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 you know, obviously being a horseman, um, because you really kind of got to be on your game. A lot of people don't realize it, but it's tough to win at those small tracks. They are like uber competitive. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And you've got to know your way around a racehorse because those are not like, um, you, you know, uh, Rolls Royces that you, you're dealing with. You're dealing with horses that, you know, you've got to, you've got to identify their issues, make sure they're feeling yeah. good, make sure they're race ready. And uh, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. We know that. Um, I admire how, you know, during a time when we're losing owners, okay, you're bringing owners into the game. We're yeah. losing trainers. You decide to become a trainer uh, and, and, and maintain such, such a positive attitude. Do you contribute that to 
your love of the game or what you've had to overcome personally to be able to do what you're doing or both? I think it's a perfect storm of both because I obviously love the game. I'm obsessed. It's all I think about. But also, I've been through so much shit stuff that I mean, what, what can go wrong that I haven't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want to overcome it. You right. want to throw me an obstacle? I'll overcome it. I don't even worry about it. Right. And thinking through all this stuff, like I used to have, I had red hair. I had a temper. You can't get me mad now. Like, it just doesn't work. Right. I just, okay, I'll move on next, next, next. Right. You know, so I think it's a perfect storm of both. Yeah. And well, well, right, a Texan with red hair, you're probably yeah. ready to fight like that. My, yeah, my name was George, you know, right. all those dumb songs. I was a little uh -huh. chubby, you know, uh -huh. so I had, a, I had a perfect story getting made fun of when I was young. Right. So you can't hurt my feelings anymore. Yeah, no. And, 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 and you, you know, in reality, there's, there's no reason to because you, you know, you were dealt a tough hand and you, and you fought your way through it. And that, that, yeah. that deserves respect from anybody um, that's that. walking around. So, and, and certainly, certainly has, has mine. Um, yeah. And your passion for the game, passion racing. Um, yeah. we, did you name that because of that, that passion? Is that what that's named for? Exactly. Yep. Yep. And uh, I did that just to get like my, my friends who don't have a lot of money. Right. Just Hey, you want to you give me 400 bucks? You want to give me 300, 400 bucks? You know, I'll collect all the money. I'll buy some little racehorse, you know? Right. So we've done that. We bought one little two-year-old filly. I started her twice, and she run terrible both times. But it's my fault. She runs uh, next Monday at Louisiana Downs. Her name's She's Extra, uh -huh. and I really like her. Don't look at her form. I put blinkers on her. I got David Cabrera, who I call Baby Jesus. He's such a good rider. Uh -huh. And uh, she's going to be like 50 to 1. And I wow. love her. So we're giving her 50 to 1 shot. I, 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 yeah. I like that. And, and our, viewers, yeah. our viewers will love that. We'll, yeah. we'll, all, we'll all watch how she does. And nobody yeah. knock the odds down. All right? Enjoy yeah. the roof of Georgia. Right, right, right. Let's not kill his price here. Um, you know, it, 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 it really is an amazing story of, of, of what you've been able to accomplish. Let me ask you this, silly question, okay? I'm a Brooklyn guy, so you're a Texas guy. We're like the opposites, you know? Right, right, right. You're, you're, you're like, you know, you could probably like sleep in the woods where I can't, where, you know, I could sleep in, 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 in like the ghetto where you probably have one eye open, you know? Yeah. Let me ask you this. Did you learn how to train? Did somebody teach you how to train? Or does everybody from Texas just know how to get up in the morning and handle handle steers, cows, horses, whatever the case may be? Um, my dad. My dad taught me a lot. Okay. You know, he, my dad. I'll tell you, my dad, he was a jockey. He was a quarter horse jockey. And he was a good one. He won like three or 4,000 races. Wow. He got too big, big in 84. And... He trained all the way up until like 2019, I think, is when he got out of this, when he re retired. And um, he's not a people person. Like, okay. he's a typical Texas guy. He stays to himself. You know, he doesn't talk to people. He doesn't say howdy and stuff like that. Hi, how you doing? But he's not a people person. So he never right. really got a bunch of owners because of that. But for being a horseman and a leg man, I've been around a bunch of them. I've worked for a bunch. He's like the best. He's the best there is when it comes to legs. And he could have been a vet. Like he's half horse, you know? Right. Right. So he's taught me just about all that stuff. And I can just, I don't know what it is now, but I can look at a horse. Maybe even, I don't even have to touch him. I can just kind of look at him. I can tell you exactly what's wrong, what we need to fix, you know? Right. And it's just something that he's taught me over the years, you know? And yeah. uh, he's like, I beat cancer lat in 2021 or 2022, whatever it was. And then it came back. And I just started rolling the Delta down. 
and it was in January of this last year. It came or December of last year. It came back in my neck. I'd have the surgery. That's why I kind of talk right now like this because they're like swollen. Right. But I called my dad. Like dad, I got. I think I had twelve in horses at the time. I'm like dad. I need to get your butt up off the couch. You need to come to Delta and run the show while I go get this surgery. So um, he answered the back call. He's like, yeah, I'm in, you know? So he went down to Delta Downs, which is like six hours from where he lived up in Fort Worth, Texas. Right. And he took over for two months. And uh, I went through chemo, uh, chemotherapy. I did my surgery and I went through chemotherapy for like two, two and a half months that he took over. And uh, we started gaining a couple horses or whatever, but I didn't start anything for like two months because I was like sick. And right. I lost, I got all the way down from 120 pounds and I wow. was 230, 235, you know, so I lost over hundred pounds. I got my strength back up about three months ago. And now I'm up to 20 horses and my dad's still my assistant. I kept him on the payroll. I was like, dude, I love this. He right. was, I don't have to worry about being the man. I don't have to worry about clients. I don't have to worry about that. All I can concentrate on is the horses and being with my son. He's like, is it cool if I still would stay working for you? I was like, hell yeah. But I'm going to send him to Remington Park. He's going to go to Remington Park at the end of this month. Okay. And then I'm going to go to Delta. We're going to split so I can claim from both places, you know? Yeah. But he's loving it. You know, I'm loving working with him. He's a laid back guy. He's, he did he had a temper too when he was young. But I guess the older he gets and seeing me go through what I, I go through, we don't argue. We don't do nothing. He has he's cool and calm. Like we're always laid back. It's so perfect. Perfect working relationship. It puts it puts things in perspective when you deal with those kind of issues, you know. Yes, yeah, so really, much, man. It, it changes your entire outlook on on everything. There were certain things in life that, you know, a lot of us are are, are misfortunate enough to have to deal with. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, do, you don't get a choice when it comes to, right. you know, cancer and some other things. It knocks at your door and that's that, you know? Yeah, you got to uh, answer it. But, you know, it really, it, it, it changes everything. You know what I mean? It, it, you know, it really just puts a whole different spin and outlook on, on 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 every aspect of your life it really it really does and and you know i admire the way that you've been able to to handle it not once but twice yeah, uh, sure. uh, and, and 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 you didn't just overcome it. you see and i don't even know if you realize this but when when you hear your story and you realize what you went you didn't just overcome it and survive it you turned it into almost a positive you made you made it you made it make you fulfill your dream and change 100%. your life and change your relationship with your dad and make it even even more solid you know what i mean yeah. and now yeah. you guys are working together you got a string you're splitting the string in in, in two areas you're winning races um yeah. you've got people looking to get into the game i mean the game is crying out for owners Owners are running from the game. The sport, in my opinion, on a managerial level, on a track level, does almost everything they can to drive owners from the game. 100%, um, yeah. And, and you're bringing them in. You, 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 you yeah. know, so hats off to you, man. I mean, that's it's, 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 it's remarkable. So you've made your, you, you, you know, your situation really really work for you and that's 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 so admirable george that really is that's Appreciate that, that, man. that that is the kind of strength that you can't work out and get you can't train for that nobody mm -hmm. you could never teach anybody that you you might put it in your kids you might put it in your elder through your blood you know what i mean through your heart but that's not mm -hmm. something you could teach somebody you know what i mean right. that's something that you 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 just gotta have that man and i you right. know that, that's so great that you've been able to do that um now training at you, you, you know louisiana downs delta remington places like that 
those places are tough and competitive and, and, you know, they're starting to move up, you know, those aren't County fairs. Do you yeah. have any dreams of running uh, Churchill Downs, Keeneland, Naira, somewhere, some of, some of those big tracks. And are there any of those big races out there that, you know, may have the name George Allen Bryan on them or, or that you dream about, you know, I mean, hundred percent, man. Like, right. um, my, uh, I have a plan two years. I want to be stable at fairgrounds. I like fair. I love new Orleans. I don't know what it is about new Orleans, but I love it. So not this coming year. They called me last year and asked if I wanted stalls and I wasn't ready. You know, I didn't have to stop. Right. So this year I'm building my stable up. Next year I want to be stable at, at New Orleans and Fairgrounds. And like I've always wanted to win like the Lacombe, you know, something like that. Something right. like that. Or even like I'm this is a this is a funny stat. I'm like oh for 20 something. I've never won a turf race. I've only won dirt races. Right. But I didn't win the wood chopper. Like, okay. all right, you can, I can't win a turf race. All right, I'll show you. I'm going to win the wood chopper next year. You know? I love it. Stuff I love like it. that. Like, that's always it. always in my mind. Oh, you say I can't do that? All right, I'm going to show you. I'm going to do you this. Know, no, you know, I, I was looking at your stats and I noticed something interesting. You tend, and I have no idea why, you're the horseman in this conversation, so if there's an answer, it's going to come from you. It ain't going to come from me. But you do very well with geldings and fillies, it appears. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. um, I, uh, and I also think horses, like, if you look, I'm, like, really bad first off the claim. Uh I got DQ'd out of a win first off the claim, so my stats would be a little bit better. But they're, like, 5%. But with me, like my horses, when I get them, they tend to get better. Like right. I don't have that. Like as soon as I don't get one, as soon as I get it, it takes me a little bit to figure them out, or, or I don't know what it is, but they tend to get better. So my first off the claim stats not very good. Um, I had some studs I didn't do very good with, but yeah, um, I think I'm better with geldings. Phillies can be tough. Phillies are uh, finicky, and they tend to get a lot of stomach issues, which I fix. So I do a little bit better with Phillies than I do with older mares. But yeah, my geldings, I love hard-knocking geldings. Right. Like just old warriors, that's what I love. I can find a warrior. She's got a bunch of problems. You just, a little TLC on an old warrior with a big heart. I can, I can take those all day long, you know? It's I funny take because, care of them. because that's kind of almost what you are. You're just a young warrior, yeah. you know, and it right, right. a lot of heart. So yep. it's interesting that, that, that you like those years from now, yep. hopefully we're talking and, and, you, and you're an old warrior. Um, yeah, yeah. Hope so, so. Uh, how is, how is your, your health right now? It's great. Um, I just wish I could get over it. Like there's swelling on the inside of my neck. It presses on my vocal cords. Right. But, I did a CT scan three weeks ago after my final chemo treatment. Right. And I had a five centimeter um, tumor in my neck from before chemo. And when they did my CT scan, they couldn't find the tumor. Okay. There was no signs of the tumor. They said there could be some of it behind some of my scar tissue. I can start taped up right now. I saw the little open wound there for my surgery because it didn't heal. But as of right now, no cancer that they can see. Right. You know, I still have some swelling in my neck from the chemo and everything in there being swollen. But other than that, man, I feel great. I wake up every morning at 4, 4, 4.30. I don't hit snooze. I just get my butt up out of bed and go to the barn. You wow. Know? That, I'd rather be at the barn than anywhere. That's admirable. There's, you know, mo- most people wouldn't get out of bed. They'd be laying there moan- moaning. Yeah. And pain. What about some that. of the? What about some of the little things? Like, did you lose your taste, sense of taste, where like you couldn't taste oh. stuff, or everything tasted salty or sour or stuff like that? Yeah. Like, since I only had half a tongue, only half, <laughs> half my taste buds work. Right. But, 
the chemo and the radiation, like, I don't know, they kill my taste buds, but they're definitely not as uh, potent as they once were. Like, everything kind of tastes bland. Yeah, I hear that comes back over time for most Yeah, people. that's what they oh. said. Over time, it'll come back, but yeah. Yeah. It's um, all right. Yeah. Um, now, you keep winning races like this. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna get on 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 a lot of a lot of more people's radar than mine. Um, yeah. Is that exciting to you? Do you welcome that challenge? Oh, yeah. That's a oh yeah. Question. I'm sure you yeah, do. Yeah, for sure. Anytime. Like I started out my career, I want to say over oh, thirty. Right. And I never got discouraged. Ever. It's just like that. I would say every loss is a learning experience. L stands for learning experience. So right. just learn, 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 learn. And then you now every time I win, this motivates me more, more, more. And I say this jokingly all the time. Like I'll even tweet out sometimes, like owners, send me horses before you can't afford me. You know, stuff like that. That's right. But yeah. And I always tell them, like, I'm going to be a problem. Y'all need to get on my team. I'm going to be a problem. And you know, I love, I, I love it. And I love what you do on Twitter where you'll like tell the whole story. Hey, I found this race at this racetrack. Um, yep. This is where we stayed. This is how we got there. Yep. This is what it costs for the extra shavings. The whole deal cost me yep. whatever. It's usually a low amount of money, $605 and the horse yep. earned 2000 or whatever the case, yep. the case may be. So you you're doing it on a, on a, on a budget. And I guess the way the game is today, that's so important because the cost could be astronomical and it really puts the owners up against the eight ball to, to, to really turn a profit. You know, you almost have to go in expecting to lose. It used to be that you couldn't win. It was so hard to win that you had to go into expect, yeah. expecting to lose money. Now the game has gotten to the point, George, and correct me if I'm wrong, because you're in it, much deeper than I am, but now even if you win, it's tough to make money because the expenses are so crazy. Yeah, like um, when I moved from um, Lone Star to Louisiana Downs, I got a, a semi load of shavings. I got nineteen horses. It's like I order a semi load because um, buying by the bag, it's like eight bucks a bag. Takes right eight bags to where I, I want them deep, you know, I bet them deep, like a foot deep. Right. But like, screw it, I'll just get a semi-load. 1400 bucks. I'm like, damn, okay. You know, it's just little stuff like that. Harlan horses, it's three-hour drive, and I have a three-horse trailer. So it took me like six, seven trips. So you hire someone, and they charge you 200 per horse. There's 3,800 right there, you know? Right. So you're at 5,000 before you before you even galloped one horse, you know? Yeah. And then I just bought home and away blinkers. I got my home and my away jerseys, you know? Those are 80 bucks a piece, you know? But yeah, everything's expensive. But yeah. that's why I put such such pressure on myself. We had inner rights. I'm not entering anything where I don't think I'm over five to one. You know, really? stuff like that. Like well, that I'm horse you mentioned, the horse you mentioned this week is gonna be over yeah. five to one. Yeah, because her form looks terrible and it's my fault. Right. I ran her the first time in a restricted <laughs> stakes race. And I probably shouldn't have, but I was taking a shot. It was restricted, you know. Right. She got bad trip. Second race, she drew on the inside and I started working on blinkers and she she started out, she outworked a filly named Grace of Caroline. She's a run happy filly I just won with at Louisiana Downs. This filly outworked her and she woke up with the blinkers. And the second time, it's my fault. I even told my client, I didn't put first time blinkers on her, it's my fault. We ran her, she went to the front, horse put a little pressure on her and she backed herself out. But now, got the blinkers on this time and if she breaks clean she goes in front i really like the chances just because the blinkers she showed so much improvement and she outworked my filly i wouldn't have made special weight with she's a right. maiden tag her I, form looks I, terrible I, but 
I, I love how you were, you, you know, were, were, were honest with the, with your client, you know, yeah. and, you know what I mean? and, and took yeah. the heat on, on, on yourself. Um, there's a lot of trainers that, you know, as well as I do, they just won't do that. They'll just, yeah. you, you know, you know, yeah. skirt that whatever, whatever way they yeah. can. Um, right. So I, I, and, I, I completely respect that as well. Yeah. Yeah. If I make a mistake, it happens, you know, just like if an owner forgets to send me a check or it happens, you know, I don't care. It's no big deal. Right. Let's just get it taken care of. So I, I messed up. That's my dog, my mom's dog. <laughs> and uh, I messed up. I'll get it taken care of. We'll fix it the next time, you know? Yeah, no, so, yeah. I, 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 absolutely. Um, how many heads you got right now? 19. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So you, you you've got yourself a nice a nice little string. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I uh I told myself by the end of this year I wanted twenty five. Right. So at the beginning of the year I was like ten. So I'm talking about crazy. And uh right. I got I got a bunch of dogs myself here. Well, I'll yeah. compete. I'll listen. I'll compete with any Texan on dogs. All right. Yeah, I, I got about I two. ten. So. I'm at my mom's house in Fort Worth because uh, I own a home in Fort Worth, but when I'm on the road, I Airbnb it. Right. So if you if you guys want to stay at Casa de Brian, it's a charming. I'm just kidding. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I uh, I Airbnb it. It's been over by TCU. I live by TCU. Right. But I came here because I had an infusion treatment today. Okay. So I got back from Fredericksburg yesterday. I drove back home here today. And then I'm waiting for my daughter to get back from church camp. She gets back at church camp at seven. And then we go to Louisiana Downs, which is three hours. And then in the morning at five, we load up and I take, I have a, a couple horses in at Fair Meadows, Tulsa, about a five hour drive. And I think they're both hammers. Like uh, they're both two to one. I don't wow. think you can get Fair Meadows, Tulsa though, because they're the high set. They don't do their, uh, their signal. But right, yeah, right. they're hammers. I'm dropping a couple of hammers on them. Yeah, that 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 that's amazing that you're able to keep up this pace um, and deal with everything that 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 you're dealing with. I mean, it's it's hard for people who aren't dealing with what you're dealing with on a personal level to keep up yeah. that kind of pace and and yeah. manage that. So that that that's really remarkable. Um, let me ask you this. Um, you know, the sport's got so many issues and so many things that we need to fix and address. Uh, and so many of them are, 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 are almost overcomplicated because, you know, George, everybody's got an opinion. Nobody can agree on anything. Nobody can agree what should be done. with it. Do you have any worries about the state of the game and the way the game is going um, as, a, as a relatively new trainer, an up-and-coming guy who's who's got such passion for the sport. Do you worry about the sport at all in the state that it's in, or do you think we're going to, we're going to survive it somehow? See, I, I obviously have a few worries, you know, like everything is declining, like attendance and stuff like that. But also this isn't 1930 that like when the racetracks were packed, there's a lot of entertainment out there. People still show up for the Derby. Like if there's a big event, People show up for it. Um, the main thing I do wish we would fix is is online gambling. Every state is different, which to me is dumb. Right. Texas, I can't bet on horses online. Makes but no in Louisiana, sense. in Louisiana, I can. Right. It makes no damn sense. It's dumb. Right. If we get the gambling aspect of it down, I think everything else can kind of fix itself. Um, I do think that there's a bunch of idiots in horse racing that don't understand idiots or don't understand horses. Um, it's like uh, horses to me are like when I was young, trying to navigate through dating. I didn't know sh I didn't know anything about girls. But I thought I did. I thought I was a ladies man. In reality, I didn't know how to treat a lady. I didn't know, you know, I didn't know any of that. And I think there's a lot of people that are like that in the horse business that are just think they know what they're doing, but they really don't. I wish it would be harder to get a trainer's license 
I wish there was. I wish you'd have to go through a course or right now since you pass a test. Right. I literally, I had just finished radiation and I drove down to Houston, Texas to take my test. I didn't study for it. Of course, I've been doing it my whole life. And I missed, I made 97. And right. I took the test. The, this is the only question I missed was what are the colors of the, the pole? The eighth pole, the quarter pole, the half my pole. I don't, I don't pay attention to that shit. I watch more races than anybody, and I couldn't tell you what damn color the poles were. But and, and let me ask you something: what What does that have to do with training a racehorse? It's exactly, it made no, it made no sense. I wish they would had a diagram of a horse's leg and point to things. What is this? What is this? What is this? And if a horse has a has a bow tendon, what's What's the treatment? What do you want it? What do you need to do for it? Those are the types of questions that need to be on a trainer's test. I, 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 I agree, and I'll give you a perfect example. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. I walked hots, I rubbed a couple of horses yeah. a lifetime ago. Okay. Right. I couldn't train a racehorse. Okay. I tell you that, right? I could not do it, would not know what to do, would yeah. not know anything, would not know how to how to diagnose anything that's wrong. But I tell you this, I would bet money and give you odds that I could sit down right now in most states just from my experience in the game and knowledge of the game you know, and probably pass the trainer's test in most states. And then you put me in a stall with a horse and I wouldn't have a clue what to do. A hundred percent, a hundred percent you could pass it. It was super simple. It wasn't, didn't have much to do and with I, that I, 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 And I happen to know what color the poles are. You know what I mean? So yeah, I would have yeah. got that question right. And what right, does that right. have to do with training a racehorse? <laughs> you put me in there and say, John, what's wrong with that horse? Or grab this or grab that. Or, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't know what to do. I'd be like, George, what do you mean? <laughs> Show me how to do it, you know? So and my, my dad, he did the barn tests for, uh, Lone Star, Rotom, and Houston. Like, after you right. take your trainer's test, you got to go to the barn. And usually there's a steward with you and another trainer. And they're like, all right, put polos on this horse, saddle this horse. I'm like, yeah. I mean, most grooms can do that. Right. But, like, I want a, a solid state vet there. All right, show me where, you know, show me. How would a horse um, jog if he was off in a stifle? Stuff right. like that, you know? Right. And they just don't do that. So I wish it'd be harder for that. I think it needs to be harder to become a trainer than what it is. Um, and also, I think you should maybe do like a little course, a business course to become a trainer. Because a lot of people, man, it's, it's a business. Like it's a business. You have to run it like a business. And if you don't have business, business acumen, maybe you shouldn't be a trainer because you're going to end up owing people, you know? And you I, can't do that in this game. I, I, you, know, you know, we're on the same page on a lot of things. We did a show a couple of months ago. Um, I forget what it was about, but we wound up talking about owners, okay? And I floated something out there. Um, we were talking about aftercare and, 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 and things like that and, and whatnot. And I said, you know, I think that there should be some thought given, and I'm not saying that they should do it, I'm, but there's just some thought given that there should be some kind of um, financial responsibility for owners. Like, like uh, let's say I've got 10,000 and that's all I've got, okay? And I decide, and I'm struggling financially, but I want to buy a racehorse, whatever. And I give you 10,000 to claim a racehorse. But I can't come up with the day money. I can't come up with the vet money. I can't come up with the bills. If something happens to the horse, I can't afford to put it on a farm. If God forbid it can't race anymore, I can't afford to take care of it. You, you know, I think there should be the consideration of some kind of financial responsibility rule where you have to show that you have a certain means to, to be an owner. You follow me? Not just the money to buy yeah. or claim the horse. Um, no. There are certain countries, okay? I'll give you an example, all right? Um, our country would be a very poor example, but there are certain countries that if you don't demonstrate 
that you have the finances to sustain yourself for a certain amount of time, you can't even apply to live there. You follow me? You can't, yeah. you know, you could stay two weeks and then you got to get out. You know what I mean? You can't, you yeah. can't just move there um, because you have to show you have X amount of money um, to sustain yourself. Why is it different with horses? Horses are, it, it's a commitment. You know what I mean? I mean you have oh, to yeah. have the finances to sustain the horse. If you've got a horse for me and I can't afford to pay you the monthly fee, who suffers? You and the horse. Yeah, for sure. All right? Makes sense. You, 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 you know, and a lot of people, I think, get in this game um, on the owner side, not realizing what it takes and the continued commitment financially that it requires you get that yeah. month the bill the first of every month you got to pay it you can't you, you, you know be late the horse got to eat the horse got to train you got to pay your workers you got to survive you know what i mean if you're carrying my money on my horses that's killing you and hurting the horses yeah 100 percent. yeah that's why uh it's been such a dream working with adam blick um he has the means to do it and he has the passion of the game. Right, right. And there are, there are plenty of owners that are like that, that, that yeah. do the right thing and, and, and have yeah, yeah. meetings and, and totally give mm -hmm. horses time when they need it. Like boat yeah, tending, yeah. you said. My answer to the boat tending question, if I was taking the test, what do you do for boat tending? Time. Horse needs time. Sick, Let them yeah. heal up. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, yeah. um, you, you, you know, there may be shortcuts and ways around that that I don't know. Yeah. But to me, both tending, give him time. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's all you can uh, do. So, you, you, you know, I, I think you're right on the trainer trainer aspect, and I think there's at least some validity to the owners having to, you know, be financially responsible and 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 and. and you know, get into the game right. So I think those are two 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 important issues going forward forward for sure. George, man, I, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show, man, and 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 just I talking to with us, man. Uh, I'm watching you win races all over at these little tracks. You're actually getting me interested in, like I said, his tracks I never. Had. I'm like, man, where's he? How does he find his tracks? Now I know the secret. Yeah, I'm going to ask Google. Where is George yeah. Allen Bryant running today? You know, yeah. you know what I mean? Where yeah. is this place? You know, yeah. um, the fairground, you're finding like fair meets and all these, these, these little meets that yeah. people didn't even think were around anymore. And that, that, that's, that's, yeah. that's passion racing <laughs> right there. That's passion exactly. racing. I love it. Exactly. Like it's another goal of mine. Like I put, I put the list of all the tracks I've already won at. Right. And then I put my hit list of the ones I'm about to win at, you know? Uh -huh. So, and then I want that list every year to go a little bit further, a little bit further, a little bit further, you know? So next year I'm going to go to, you know, Zia Park or wherever, you know, we're going to go to New Mexico. I'm going to hit up Oakland this year. I'm going to try to hit, get one at Oakland. Right. You know, I just want to win one every, 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 I just want them to see my name. Oh, you don't, you might not bet Delta Downs, but you got Oakland. I want you to see right. my name at Oakland, you know? Right, right. Yeah. Well, you know, you know what I, I want to see your name. There's two races where I want to see your name. I want to see your name in the Wood Chopper and I want to see yeah. your name in the Lacombe. And if you win yes, the sir. if you win the Lacombe, then you're in the Derby conversation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, yeah. you know, then all of a sudden everybody knows your name. Then I'll be calling, you'll be saying, No, nah, I don't do shows like this. <laughs> I'm, always doing I'm, it. I'm I'm going on ESPN next week, man. Not best, yeah. best one. But but I would love love to see it happen, man. So uh, and it. there ain't nobody in the game deserves it more, man. I I, I complete Thank you, man. complete respect a, a thousand and one percent, George, man. Um, Appreciate thank, it, man. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, we will be watching you. We'll be rooting. Tell everybody the horse they're rooting for again, so they know. Uh, Monday at Louisiana Downs, she's extra. And then if you can bet at Fair Meadows Tulsa, like Palatial Times, I have him in tomorrow, tomorrow night. It's a three mile, or not sorry, three turn mile race. Wow, okay. You don't get many of those. No. 
I three love them. Turn, three, turn, three turn mile races at tracks. Yeah. We don't know if we could even bet, but we'd be rooting for you anyway, man. Yeah. We'd be, we'd be rooting for you anyway. And she's extra. Um, yeah. That, 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 that'll be phenomenal. So George, man, that, thanks again. Uh, all the best. You, you got a friend in Pastor Wire. Our whole platform supports you. PastorWire.com, PastorWire TV. We're behind you 100%. Personally, you're in my prayers. Thank you. And, 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 and much, 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 much love and respect for you, my man. You're, you're, Appreciate you, bro. You're, you're, you are a man's man. And, and, and like I said, toughness man that's it man you got it you're, you're you're the real mccoy and and you know i'm 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 privileged to have had you on my show honestly it was my it was my pleasure man i appreciate it well i appreciate that you stay well i'll shut this off we'll say goodbye off camera and okay. uh, we, we will be rooting for you thank you man thanks Legend himself, Frankie Dettori. Ciao, Frankie. Tutta posto. Tutta posto, yes, that's well. a good start. <laughs> so you have you, you ever lost your Italian. Frankie Dettori, legend, world-class jockey, one of the best ever to sit in the saddle, ambassador to the sport of kings. Meet Frankie during his fanfare like never before, only on Pass the Wire TV. Dan Oman here with some exciting news. The RF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator exclusively on DRF Bets. Vino Rosso has taken the lead! And it's a vintage performance by Vino Rosso! Nobody does it better.